Hi guys, it is 9.03 p.m. I want to start this video by telling everybody that Mike Morales, I believe, is going to be interviewing Ilana Freeland tonight. That's what I heard a couple of days ago, though you know, things change. But uh, as far as I know, Ilana Freeland will be talking about nanotechnology in our atmosphere. So I think it might be a really good uh, program to tune into. Mike Morales, I will link below to his channel. So, remember? Yeah, some weird storm on radar? Oh no, it was just bats, remember? Yeah, the bats. Do you see what look like green explosions? You can see the circles radiating from single points. But that's not rain. It's bats. Remember? I hope you remember. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, Check Dop this out. The National Weather Service spotted... Doppler radar shows birds taking off at sunrise in Georgia. Wow. And this is a kind of weird... Uh, look at radar. This on radar in Woodbine, Georgia. It's a flock of birds taking off around sunrise. This happened on Wednesday. Now this appeared on the radar for over 30 minutes. Wild stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, that's the Bahamas. Okay. Um, which I will be posting a video on birds for 30 minutes. Weather radar captures flocks of birds taking off and there's no picture or video. Isn't that, oh, wait a second, there is. Oh my God. Doesn't that look familiar? Yes, bird migration and radar. Here we go. Okay you're going to see an awful lot of migrating birds come up in one second. They have slowed down the radar sight really slow. Oh my God, they're taking off. They're taking off, you see? Did you not see that? Let's just look at it one more time. Oh my God, there they go. There they, oh, Lord, they must have cell phones calling each other from state to state to state. Let's go. And do you hear the meowing? That means I've got to pause the video. Okay, so birds, cats, bats, bugs. Let's see, ro roosting birds detected by... Doppler radar, roosting. Oh, wow. They're all roosting. Okay, yeah. Uh, beginning around the middle of summer, curious expanding donut patterns often appear just before sunrise. <laughs> just before sunrise, right? Uh, well, they seem to be appearing now pretty much 24-7 leading up to fall migration a number of bird species are known to gather at large communal roosting sites which are often detected by doppler radar and here they are detected by doppler radar gee i wonder what that long boop that that laser like thing that's pulsing right there i wonder what that is so here we First have. Inside on whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a second there. Getting a little bit too loud on me. Yeah. Here are more. Oh, wow. You know, if you do a little bit of uh, searching on the birds, the bats, the bugs that show up on radar, you'll see an awful lot, an awful lot of articles and videos. So here are migrating birds show up on weather radar. Whoops, what was that? Oh, 2017. 
sorry about the uh, crazy videos that I post. Radar from the National Weather Service in Boulder today. Meteorologists say the blob you see isn't rain or snow, but birds. Theories include that's a mass of migrating butterflies or blackbirds or witches <laughs> fanning out for Halloween. Ooh. Okay, well, uh, now we have dragonflies. Giant swarm of dragonflies spotted on radar over Pennsylvania. Which one? Well, there are other articles that dragonflies were spotted in three different states. Yeah, the swarm. Uh, radar... Oh, here, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania showed a large formation this week that wasn't rain. Meteorologists and residents in these states determined the radar likely picked up, likely, oh, likely, so they don't know. Mm. But let's just claim it's a large swarm of dragonflies. Okay, you ready? Wow, this is not rain being observed by these radars. Mm -mm. Care to take a guess as to what is traversing the region? Oh my God, guys, oh my God, are we in trouble? It's important that people begin to think, don't you think? Yeah, dragonflies. Well, and the dragonflies, wow, they have this kind of ripple effect to them. I guess they're all flying in formation. And if you look closely, you can see that ripple effect. Might it be microwave? Oh, and look at all of these lines. Well, I guess they're flying in formation in Indianapolis, in uh, Dayton. Well, they're flying in a different formation. And here, I guess the dragonflies just, well, evaporate. What are we going to do with this incessant lying that takes place? Weather radars reveal an 80% chance of dragonflies. That's the New York Times. Yeah. And they pulse. Wow. The dragonflies pulse. Look at them. Pulse. Boom. 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 Oh my God. Am I going crazy? Am I losing my mind? It's, uh, yeah dragonflies and article after article after article on the dragonflies seen in local communities appearing on weather radar oh look swarms of dragonflies are taking over several communities so much so they've shown up on weather radar take a look at this video tweeted out by the national weather service in cleveland this video from washington township westmoreland county right here Entomologists say swarms of dragonflies are actually quite common, and they happen when they are migrating south to warmer weather. Ahead of the winter months, there's an entire group of people known as the Dragonfly Swarm Project, and these folks actually track the swarms in an effort to better understand why. Swarms have been reported here in Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Ohio. Swarms. All right, I'm just gonna play a few minutes of two videos and let me play this one first. Jerry, and what I'm talking about here are the bullseye ring sheep plasma rings that form off of high power radio transmission, radio waves, and this is done at experiments up at HARP, confirmed by the Air Force Research Laboratories showing the ring formation, explaining how it forms, why it forms, and that it's not just at heart, it's any high frequency pulse that's targeted. Now, high frequency pulses occur
from Nexrad radar stations. Okay, and you notice how they're all green. All right. Um, they don't have to be perfectly circular. And I have said that something is very different on our radar lately. I do believe that they are using uh, Nexrad stations with much higher power and they are creating plasma and creating an awful lot of excitement in our atmosphere. That is what you're seeing. You're not seeing bats, you're not seeing birds, you're not seeing, you know, uh, these, you know, oh, Americans are being made such fools, such unbelievable fools. And as you read these articles, you know, you'll come upon those words like likely. Oh, it's a likely swarm. So they don't know. Okay. And what we are seeing now is a tremendous amount of atmospheric chaos that is explained by Dutch since back in hmm, uh, 2016. In pulse mode, normally radar operates in the microwave band, so in the gigahertz, but it pulses in the megahertz bandwidth, which overlays and coincides with the same megahertz bandwidths that they've used at HARP and other high frequency facilities to generate these plasma rings. And this is visible. This is actually happening up in the upper ionosphere. And they describe it as an upside down top hat shape that reaches down from the ionosphere into the upper atmosphere or lower ionosphere. And that's what we see here. Compare here of the harp rings from radar stations to the harp rings from harp. And these are smaller, of course, and they're less powerful. That's why we're not seeing actual visible plasma form off of this down here to the south at the radar stations. But the effect produces an actual wind rotation above the transmitter. There's actual excitement that happens particle exchange, electron cascade, storm formation. And we've documented this over and over again. For instance, Dover, Delaware on the East Coast, large radar pulse comes out of the Air Force Base there. And several hours later, severe storms kick up and the only spot to get an actual tornado warning is directly over the transmitter at the base. Just one of hundreds of examples. The US military has created multiple plasma spheres in the atmosphere, observed those using radar. People said it was impossible to see this stuff on radar and that the rings we were seeing were birds and bugs. That's what they said they were. You can go read the skeptic forums, huge forum, talking about how Dutch Sense has just seen birds and bugs, that these are birds and bugs. Now we know it's not. The experiments were done to prove that rotation, wind rotation, forms above a transmitter. So this is already proved by MIT scientists that you can literally generate a vortex above a transmitter and their idea is to generate tornadoes to produce power okay so we can go down the list here on all the different documentation of high power transmissions lasers stripping ions in the atmosphere to produce cloud condensation nuclei that may sound complex let me just describe it like this a high power transmission strips particles in the air that then collect water molecules and form into clouds and precipitation as described by Michio Kaku in this video here. I'm going to put a link down below to this post so you guys can come over and check it out. Also, they came out further and described it that they can do it with two beams. That one beam can strip the CCN, form plasma, and the other beam can pump it up and sustain it. So they generate plasma with one, hit it with the other beam, sustain it. That's what the U.S. military has done at length. That's how they sustain the plasma ball in the atmosphere. They announced that back in 2013. But now we have it, guys. Again, look at the diagram that's included with this. And look at the date that this all occurred on. They're doing this experiment here, and I've got the PDF here provided by the DTIC.mil, okay, November of 2011. Now, was there a guy online that was going through a huge catastrophe and persecution over researching harp rings up at harp and at radar stations in November of 2011? There sure was. And now they call it harp ring. Now, 
the way this all happens, there's an energy exchange where the beams interact. You can imagine also this can happen up in the ionosphere with just one transmitter, either dueling transmitter. This is Lieutenant Thomas Bearden's diagram here provided on scalar. But the scalar is just nothing more than an area where the energy exchange occurs. Like at CERN, they're doing experiments on the scalar Higgs boson. And we're talking about an area just like at CERN where they're using microwaves and klystrons. You'd have to look up CERN and understand what I'm talking about here. But that they use banks of klystrons. Klystrons are basically what powers the next rad radars here in the States. Banks of them, though, put together to power that beam at CERN. The beam at CERN is nothing more than microwave. You can look it up. So when we're talking about the scalar exchange, this is something that is, was controversial science, but now it's proved. The plasma that forms at a distance from the transmitter is not subject to the square and Burr's law, that it doesn't dissipate at a distance, that an excitement occurs at a, at a distance when certain harmonics are reached, as described in this paper they talk about the harmonics, they talk about the level, uh, the megahertz bandwidth that they're using here to generate it. But I can already tell you, other megahertz bandwidths have been used, not just the single megahertz, going up into the teens, uh, even up into microwave bands, it's been done. And again, the experiments have already been done. This is not my take on it. You can just go read it. So the, the whole debate was whether or not this was possible, right? That everybody said, oh, it's not possible that this could happen, that radar stations could generate this. Well, now they've proved that the high frequency pulses generate plasma at a distance from the transmitter in the shape that we're seeing here. This isn't background clutter and it's not birds and bugs. If it was background clutter, all the radar stations would show it. There's many more radar stations in the location here, but only the locations that were inducing that plasma formation. And this is not visible to the human eye. It's reflective though on radar. It's, it's now proved this is reflected on radar. So okay. <clears throat> I will link below. I'm not going to play any of this. Um, it is confirmed scalar weather modification dual beams cause instant storms. But, you know, look, we have been seeing <laughs> uh, what they are calling dragonfly swarms captured on radar. We see this all the time now, all the time. Let me just play from uh, 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this was this morning. So I guess we have dragonflies over here. Uh, but what are we seeing all of these you know, pulses from radar and extremely low frequencies. Oh, Northern California had a swarm of earthquakes. That's right, I forgot to pull up that article. Um, you know, I've been seeing such things here on radar. I don't know what the hell is going on, and that's why I want to check out what Ilana Freeland has to say about this nanotechnology because, you know, uh, uh, what is this band that seems to be like pulling, dragging this storm, Texas, Oklahoma area? That was today, uh, 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 well, at 3.30 a.m. But look at all of, uh, we've got these next rad stations that are truly just the emissions, the powerful emissions of dangerous frequencies, the high frequencies or the extremely low frequencies, um, it's really not good, not good for life. Missouri's got a whole lot of frequencies pulsing away. And, but what was, where, we had and it's still raining. We've had thunder since about six o'clock. It went on for hours. I spoke to a neighbor who heard the local forecast. We were supposed to have thunder with no lightning and a little bit of rain. We had massive rain, a whole lot of lightning, and thunder 
that just went on for hours and hours, as Thunder Now does. But uh, where did it come from? Hmm, well, let's check out another time. Um, how about 12.30 p.m. today? Okay, no storms in, no storms anywhere uh, that I can see coming in from where? Well, you see an awful lot of, once again, dangerous frequencies pulsing away. But there was no storm anywhere, but it was created. It was created. All right, uh, I'll show you how it was created. This was at, um, well, this was actually at 10 to 3, 10 to 3 p.m. today. Ah, look what they've got going here. I absolutely do believe that this is nanotechnology working to create weather. And boy, they did create weather. Let's see. Uh, hear the thunder? Uh, w since when do we have these storms that, well, seem to have been just generated uh, near the border of South Carolina in North Carolina and then they head on down south and they have a nice line of severe storms. So what is this square? It looks like a square of plasma right up here. So oh uh, take a look at the cloud formation. That's thunder. So, yeah, you can see the continued creation of cloud, which can be created just simply by, you know, ejecting high-powered electricity into an ionized atmosphere. But look at the squares that develop. right here, a big one, and the, uh, the straight-lined cloud, artificial cloud, and right down here you'll see another square, but you can see all of the lines right through here. This is made by man. You know, these lines that you see, straight lined formations, you know, uh, well, uh, don't you wish you could get through to some people? Let's check out radar. Oh, wow. Well, we sure did have an awful lot of Doppler radar um, pulsing away. All of these circular lines are signatures of our Doppler radar stations. Um, but they're 
high frequencies and the straight line is the extremely low frequencies. You've got the sawtooth frequencies and you'll see more extremely low frequencies in this storm that we had here. Well, you know, we are living the era of the lie, I guess, and, you know, that's, that's what we're going to be living. It's, uh, it's not fun, but it sure does, uh, well, are any of you bored with what we're living? Because I sure am not. Um, but all of these frequencies in use in this storm and and there you have another i believe line of plasma right underneath all of the severe red uh you've got this blue line and you also had the um shot from georgia right there right there right there all right guys um no uh, dragonfly swarm? Sorry. Oh, all links are below. I hope you, I hope you all have a nice, good, uh, great weekend. 